Hi, and welcome to No Budget. I am talking to Yannick Olendek. Did I say it right? It's close enough there. Is that not right? <laughs> Olendek, but Olendek. it's fine now. Fuck. <laughs> I literally was yelling at these guys that I'm going to get it right. Yannick Olendek. Okay. Uh, and you are the producer of a film called Writing Home, yeah. uh, which I just watched yesterday. It was a lovely, lovely film. Can you give us the, the one or two lines, the elevator pitch of what the, the film is for anyone watching? Yeah, sure. Um, Basically, it's the story of Daniel Doran, who returns home to a broken home, the life that he left behind, to his, his long-lost love and his daughter, who he's never met. And it's basically about forgiveness and whether he can continue on uh, living his life with his family or whether he'll go back to London. That's kind of it, the path yeah. that he takes after that. It's part of the, the film-based digital film program, is that? Yeah. Yep. The Masters in Digital film, Feature Filmmaking and film Filmmaking, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, at the start we were introduced to different lectures and we had different lectures of like basically guest lectures that came in from basically all over, all over the world, from the USA, from England, from Ireland. We were taught like the basics, so for example like the basics of cinematography, editing using, it was Premiere Pro, um, script writing, story development, producing. And then after that, we kind of had like a practice project to a certain extent, mm -hmm. QED, which was also screened at Galway, where we were given different roles in the crew. I was producer slash production manager. And then after that, that was kind of like a little tester. And mm -hmm. then after that, we went on to Riding Home, where we were each assigned our own different crew. And that was our first time as a group making a feature film together. So it was good. It was good preparation, definitely. How yeah. did you guys decide like who kind of goes into what role? Because it, since it is a class project, I would imagine a lot of people are like, I want to be the director, or I want to be yeah, the, you know, like, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Like. It was like, um, the directors had to give a pitch. Okay. So they had to literally take a scene from the script from writing home and present it um, in, their own, in their own way and show exactly why they should have been a director. So they would show, for example, like the color palette that they would have used. Um, any kind of changes that they want to make, for example, to the character, make him more sympathetic, make him more despicable, you know, whichever way they wanted it, and basically show why they would be the best ones to do it. And then from that, they chose three directors who went on. And in the rest of the roles, um, you can kind of just choose them yourself, like pick, you okay. know, that kind of way. How was that with three directors? Did they each kind of have their own style? Did they agree? Because I'm curious yeah. uh, how well all of that worked, or did you and uh, the other producers, Mark, um, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Coffee, right? Yeah. Did you and Mark have to kind of keep them on track? Like, how was, how was that kind of process well, they, working in that group environment? They, they seemed to keep themselves on track pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, it was strange how they managed to make it so cohesive because it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, to me, I find, look like as if it's three different parts. No, it looks like uh -huh. as if it flows as one thing. Um, I think that they worked very well together. That there was a lot of uh, cooperation between the three. Did they, uh, one person shoot like one scene, one person shoot another scene, or were all three of them was, there at the same time? No, it was, it was put into three different weeks. And when they weren't directing, they were actually doing different roles, like for example, script supervisor or helping out with production design, mm. anything like that. that kind of thing. Working with FilmBase, since they it was through their program, how involved in the production was FilmBase? No, they were they were certainly quite involved, like uh, not as involved as I would have expected, but mm -hmm. certainly in terms of the casting process, like it went through numerous different rounds until the cast was perfect. And excuse me. This is where Alan's experience, you can definitely tell, comes in that he, that he like kind of told them to think about the cast, think about who you're bringing in, and then eventually it literally just got to the best cast it could have gotten to. Um, and then in terms of after the film was done, there was numerous rough cuts and screenings and stuff, and like just to like literally go through it and basically show us what needs to be corrected, what can be done, what needs to be reshot, that kind of stuff. So yeah, they would have had a decent, decent input in it and stuff. It was shot. In Dublin, in what's the name of the small town that it was shot in? In Carlingford. Carlingford, yeah, it's beautiful. Like, it is, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's very nice. Uh, uh, yeah. the, there's kind of a few few scenes in the film where you just see this nice overview of the town, and he's coming into it and stuff, and it's just a lovely, lovely area. Yeah, like, yeah, that definitely. makes me want to go there. <laughs> yeah, it does, isn't it? Like remember the first time we saw the the first drone shots, and we were like, "Fucking hell!" Like it's mm -hmm. lovely. Like it was very nice, and. Like it was just, it's just a perfect picturesque town for what we would have uh, yeah. like thought that the town should have looked like in, in the script. So it was actually, it was very handy. Uh, awesome. Yeah, and it's played really well by Tony Kelly. Tony Kelly was great. Yeah, 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 yeah he was yeah. very good. And it's, it's great because uh, we had him on the show previously. And it's interesting to see him go from 
the hurler, which is a character that uh, that he does to uh, to Daniel, Daniel Doran, yeah, who is yeah. like a complete one eighty, and and it's kind of funny to yeah. see him too because you know he's all cleaned up, he's suited up, and uh, really interesting. Uh, yeah, definitely, I found as so. well. Yeah. How did you guys find him? Because he he's not involved in the program, right? He wasn't involved in the program. Okay. That was a casting process. I actually wasn't involved in the casting. That mm -hmm. was mainly Mark and then the three directors, and he's basically he sent in a showreel and he came in and people we decided like alan was as well saying to us that he's great and it was the perfect choice because mm -hmm. i thought he really did very well like he really got into the character you mm -hmm. know he transitioned well and he really brought something to the role i thought um, yeah yeah and it must have been rough on him because uh let's see he gets to make out and fool around with some uh hot blonde girl at one point a hot brunette uh, another hot brunette, like so. It must have been really. I'd uh, say it was rough. Uh, really <laughs> rough for him to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, casting in general, I thought was really well done for that, and especially because it's a really large cast. Did you guys find working with so many extras and background people and such a large cast difficult for basically new directors? Yeah. Um, certainly compiling, getting the extras to come, that was no mm -hmm. easy feat. Like it took a took fucking ages. Like. Um, and then the cast, I was, I thought the cast was great. Yeah. To be honest with you, yeah. The family were brilliant. Geraldine, Juliet, Tom were great. And like everyone else as well, like they did a really good job. I was, I was impressed yeah. by them. Yeah, yeah. I do want to talk a little bit about the cinematography in the film because yeah. it is a beautiful film. Yeah. Uh, the DOP, was he... Uh, the there, DOP, there was, no, there was two. Two DOPs. Two DOPs, yeah. Declan Smitty and Anthony Courtney. And they're both part of the... They're both program? part of the Masters, yeah, exactly, yeah. Declan would have been doing interiors and Anthony would have been doing exteriors. Mm -hmm. So it was it was Anthony then who was doing the ones, the outside ones. So yeah, definitely, yeah. I, I love the fact that those types of shots now are actually affordable to yeah, you know small yeah. filmmakers and stuff like that because years ago you'd have to rent a helicopter or get a crane or something like that and now you can get you a, need a massive a, budget like oh uh, absolutely and you can get these beautiful shots with drones and stuff in there uh, yeah. uh, no it is fantastic like the it adds so much to the production value as well whenever you have a shot like that which mm -hmm. is just encompasses so much of the environment like those kind of birds as you're saying like it would have been previously unimaginable to have something to of that grand scale so yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah, well, that's and nice. that's exactly it, uh, especially with small budget, no budget films. Uh, it's those little things that give it that professional look. Yeah, so definitely. you get these nice sweeping shots. Um, and even things I noticed that a lot of people miss are just those, the, the moments connecting one scene to another scene. Just these little shots yeah. of a person. The you little know, GVs and exactly, things like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like that type of stuff in it is, is really nice to see because yeah, I, I go to film festivals all the time and it's kind of like, Here's a scene of people talking in this room, and then it cuts to a scene of people yeah, talking yeah. into this room. It feels like as if things are just happening rather than it's kind of like transitioning smoothly. Yep. Yeah, lovely flow to it. Was that kind of a conscious decision on the the, the who the director's part or the DOP? That would have been or? that would have been more of the directors deciding to do GVs in Carlingford and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, would have been the director's idea. Yeah, nice. Yeah. For the post production, did you guys then send it out to a post production house? Yeah, it was sent out to a post house for grading mm -hmm. and sound edit. Um, I think it was a, it was at least I don't know. I think about two weeks or so. Yeah, okay. sent out to there. I'm not I'm not sure exactly which post house, but it definitely was sent out. Yeah, yeah great decision to do that because yeah. no, yeah. that's another one of those things that gives it that really nice gives it that edge, that extra twenty percent, exactly. twenty percent you need. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, with screenings so far, it has screened at the Galway Film Festival. Galway Film Festival, exactly. Uh, yeah. Here in Ireland, and what other fest festivals do you, are you sending it to? Um, there was one that I'd heard of before that it will be sent to, in Luxembourg mm -hmm. to a festival there. Um, it's going to be screened in uh, Waterford soon enough, mm -hmm. where Tony Kelly is from, and at the IFI at a date. It's still to be decided, but I'm sure we'll let you guys know soon enough as soon as we can. Yeah. And part of the funding for that, uh, I'm assuming, came from the film based program, but I know you also yeah. did an Indiegogo campaign. Um, yeah, we also did an Indiegogo campaign where we raised, I think it was roughly around seven and a half grand. How did the Indiegogo campaign go? Because now you see so many films trying to be funded through that platform. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, so it's good that you got that much out of it. Yeah, I found it was, uh, Indiegogo was very good. And I kind of preferred it in terms of Kickstarter. I can see mm -hmm. why film based were kind of angling that we go for Indiegogo because the money that you raise, no matter what amount it is, you got to keep it yourself. Whereas with Kickstarter, for example, 
if you raise and it's just it's even a hundred euro below what you say it's going to be you got you lose it all yeah so exactly kind of fucked like if you don't get it <laughs> yeah like yeah mine. and the difference yeah. is indiegogo i think takes a, a, a their percentage that they gets a little bit higher yeah, exactly yeah, that's yeah, kind yeah. of the balance between yeah. the two yeah well, great. Well, thanks for coming and talking course, to us. Yeah, my uh, pleasure. We'll definitely great keep me. an eye out for the film. Uh, I, like I said, I've already seen it, but uh, but uh, you know, check a film festival near you <laughs> to uh, see if it's screening <laughs> there, or if it gets picked up by distribution, which it might. Honestly, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I honestly think it's good enough to where it might get picked up. Uh, Absolutely. If, uh, Very somebody good. might see it. So nice. All right. Yeah. Thanks. I'm, I'm not going to shake your hand again. My hand still hurts from the last hand. All shake, right. But, yeah. uh, we can no do a fist bump. All right. Nice. <laughs> All right. And we'll catch you next time.